And what we're going to do today uh, is talk about uh, the person who maybe more than anyone else in the history of Irish soccer um, made the game popular in this country, uh, brought the international soccer team to places uh, that we'd only dreamed of going. I'm talking, of course, about uh, Jack Charlton, known as Big Jack. Uh, Jack uh, came here in 1986 and stayed for 10 years and it was a hell of a ride, a hell of a party uh, and I'm joined by John Giles who uh, goes back a long way with Jack they were colleagues together at Leeds uh, for 10 years or more in the team, great team managed by Don Revy uh, and uh, John, uh, you go back a long way with Jack mm. uh, and he was the player at Leeds, when you left Manchester United to go to Leeds. Uh, and Jack had been there a long time uh, and was, I think he was, um, when he first played for England, actually, he was 30. He was a late uh, oh, yeah, developing yeah, player. Yeah. But he was there when when you um, arrived at Leeds, yeah. uh, which was quite an exciting time. Norman Hunter, uh, Terry Cooper, Peter Lorimer, all these players were, Eddie Gray, were sort of flowering it was a young, uh, hot team, and Jack was was there as well. But he wasn't. Um, uh, he was far from an England international at that stage. <laughs> yeah. And no. of course, I should say he was a member of the England team that won the of World course, Cup in '66. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was he, he was there in what they called in Leeds the bad old days. I mean, yes, you know, Leeds were uh, before Don Revie took over uh, were second division team mostly. Uh, played in the first division a couple of few, you know, and then down again, but mostly a, a second division team. Uh, and Don was actually a player with him. Yes. And uh, it was very, very badly run when Don was a player and before Don took over. Yeah. There was a lot of bad pros there, I mean, who weren't doing the stuff. And Jack was one of them. Yeah. And uh, when Don took over, of course, Don had an advantage when he took over. He knew who the bad lads were. Yeah. And, and Jack was one of them. And Jack was one of them, and Jack was told he was on his way out. When you say bad, these guys who well, wouldn't didn't train, tra didn't train, didn't look after yeah, themselves. Yeah, didn't uh, you know messing around? If there was a, if it was a circle put out up on the on the training ground, they'd throw some of the stuff down <laughs> down the little hill out of the way, yeah. and it, like it was, it was bad. Uh, and and Jack was part of that. And then when see when Don took over. Obviously, Don had been a player there for a couple of years before he took yeah. over, so he knew exactly what was going on. And it was amazing the way it happened because the, the, the chairman of the club, I think it was Don was going to Bournemouth, and he, he wrote uh, a, 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 a good, strong letter for Don to become to get the job as manager. And when Don was gone, he, he pulled him back and said, if, I, if he's that good, why yeah. am I recommending him? Yeah, to somebody else. So he gave Jack the job. Uh, sorry, he gave uh, Don the job. Right. But Don knew who the bad lads were. Right. And I think Don said, Jack, you're on the way out. Unless you do that, that, and that, and that, which he did. Right. And he buckled down then and then became, I mean, in my opinion, the best centre half in, in, in England in, 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 the, in what was English First Division then. Yes. For about five years. Right. But as you say, he wasn't, I don't think he was 29, I think he was about 27. Yeah. When he when he got a grip of himself and, and started to yeah, play. Yeah, actually, I, I think he was 30 when he first got in the England team. Oh, he could have been. He could have been yeah. that. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Because it took him two or three yeah. years to get established yeah. as the new Jack, yes. as it were, yes. you know, uh, with the with, with the Leeds team. Yeah. So, and he did get a grip of himself. What were his strengths as a centre-half? Well, first of all, he was very good in the air, yeah. which which you had to be, probably still have to be. Um, uh, he, he could cover the ground really well. Yeah, the, 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 the set, big the, long stride. Big on long stride. Yeah, he wouldn't have been quick around the ball, but he could. If it was a, a chase between him and the centre forward, there wasn't many that could beat him. Right, a big long stride. Uh, he could get a good tackle in. He could track people down. Uh, he had a good attitude to winning. Yes, maybe maybe too good at times. Uh, I mean, because sometimes if we were losing, he'd, be, he'd go up centre forward. Yeah, you know, put the, uh, which I never agreed to. But 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 he was very. Very hot headed on the pitch, enthusiastic in a in a, in a hot headed yeah. way. I mean, he, he he was captain for a while, and Don took the captaincy off him, and yeah. I think he was pleased to get yeah. rid of it. Yeah, you know. See, one of the things that um, 
it seems Leeds invented was the centre half going up uh, and obstructing the goalkeeper. I mean, he's a big man, Jack. Mm. And I remember that Leeds team causing a lot of controversy, saying this was gamesmanship and that Jack going and standing there mm. for corner kicks and even maybe for throwing, but certainly for free kicks. Yeah. And actually, corner, uh, well, not for free kicks, corner kicks yes. only, because free kicks you couldn't, you'd be yeah. upside. But yeah, definitely corner kicks. We, we, we were the first to do that. Yeah. And, that, and of course, when it would have been Leeds, it was called gamesmanship and all yeah. the various things. He wasn't obstructing the goal, he was just standing on the goal line. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's, I mean, he wasn't touching the goalkeeper, he was just standing on the goal line. Making and and luckily enough, we too, Eddie was, was accurate corner kick, I was an accurate corner kicker, yeah. and he was a big fella, and it, it was very, very dangerous. And, and what happened with Leeds, of course, it was gamesmanship and everything else. Within three months, yeah. everybody was doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just the way it was, and it was. But that's Jack was. He was good in the air, Eamon, mm. as you as you as you know. Uh, you know, he's a big fella. So free kicks, corner kicks. He was very dangerous. He scored, scored quite a few important, important goals, goals for Leeds yes. uh, in that way. But he could cover the ground. He could read the game quite well. He was. Uh, he was. Um, he had that type of personality. You know, yeah. But Jack, Jack was like one time we remember playing at Newcastle, and it was ball played down the, the right wing that he should have got out to cover, cut it out, cut 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 the fella down, and yeah. he didn't. The ball was crossed, and they scored. And we came in at half time, and Don said, "Jack," and Jack, see, Jack was very hot headed, very had lose the temper very quickly, you know. Yeah. And he was effing and blinding, and he said, "The problem, what I didn't go," he says, "because every time I leave, leave the effing middle," he said, "there's a goal scored." <laughs> now he's yeah. playing with Paul Reaney and Paul Maley and Norman Hunter and Terry Cooper, some of the best defenders, but that didn't matter to Jack. Yeah. Yeah. If he left the middle, yeah, it was in other words, he was the defence. Yeah. Now his style of play, of course. Uh, became a matter of great controversy when he was the Irish team manager, at least for some of us. Um, it was route one. Uh, and, it, but it wasn't as crude as we'll get to that, but it wasn't quite as crude as I, as it might sound. But, uh, one of the things in your team, I know you've told me many times, you, you and Billy Bremner are probably the best midfield pair, like Chavi and Iniesta in the English game at the time. Jack didn't like you guys coming no. deep to get the ball off him. No. He, did, he, he didn't agree with it. And if Jack didn't agree with something, he didn't agree with it. I mean, and, uh, well, my theory on, on, on Jack was that Jack was a big centre half. And Jack was, Jack was of a special personal type of character. I mean, yeah. Jack was a very, very selfish yeah. individual. Yeah. Very selfish individual. Now, before I start talking about Jack, I got on very well with Jack. Still got on very well, Jack. I regard him as a friend of mine. And I'm talking about football. Yeah, and you now. like him. And I like him. Yeah. He's straightforward in what he does. So I've no problem with Jack at all. On football and matters, I had big problems with Jack, right? Because Jack was a big centre half who would be in tight areas, would be very dodgy. Yeah. Right. So, but Jack was the type of character who saw the world through his own eyes. Yeah. And he saw football through his own eyes. Right. So if Jack got into a tight situation on the edge of the box, there was a good chance he would lose it. Right? Yeah. So he saw everybody else yes. the same as himself. Yeah. In other words, even we call my grand Mark Lawrence. Oh, anybody, even Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Even his own Bobby. Or Bobby, Billy, and myself. Yeah. So if we were playing in a match, I mean, we could win, say, eight matches on the trot doing what we did. Right. But if we lost the match, then Don used to call it a crisis meeting if we lost the match. Okay, Jack. Those two little sonsos are coming too deep yeah. for the ball. And they're losing the ball. Nothing about the eight matches no. that we won doing yeah. what we did. And the other thing he used to say to you, Tommy, why are you coming so deep, deep to pick it up? I could deliver that pass. Well he, he didn't he didn't quite say he didn't quite say that. It, it, it would be uh, we don't want to I knew what he did. He he was scared yeah. we would lose the ball. Yeah. And we used to have fierce rows, Jack and myself and and Billy. Like, give us the ball and he'd, he'd say get up the pitch you two right yeah. because he didn't believe that we could do it and we didn't lose goals I mean, if we'd lost goals you'd say well yeah. that's fair enough but that's that's he saw yeah. he couldn't do what we could do no right and he didn't give us any credit for that so no, I had a fierce row with him one time and I said I swear and like Adam and the two of us at each other I said Jack if you wouldn't have your Bobby in the team, like Bobby was the best ever. Like, would, yeah. you, know, you wouldn't have, he said, I would if he did what I told him to do. <laughs> yeah. I said, but he wouldn't be Bobby anymore. <laughs> 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 do you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's the way he saw 
the game. Yes. Right. So when he became a manager, Eamon, that's what that's why he did what he did. Anybody mm-hmm. around the edge of the box, you're going to lose it there. Get it up the pitch so there's no danger. Yeah. And then you get after the ball. And that was a, con- a consistent thread from being a player but, right through right to, to the managed. very end yes. of his days with the yes. Irish team, yes. which ended in 96, actually. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah. But it, how it worked for him, you see, I mean, he, 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 he really believed in what in that was the right thing to do. And, of course, if you look at what he, he was doing, there was there was no, no taking chances at all, mm. right? So there was never ever a chance that you were going to lose the ball there. And when he knocked it forward, then, then he said, put them under pressure. Yes. Right. And that's what he did really well. Yes. Now, when he took over the Irish team, he did that with terrific players. Yes. As we know. I yeah. mean, that was the criticism I had, I think you had of him, that we could have done better with the players that we had. Sure. But we'll come to that in a minute. But that's the way Jack saw, that's the way he saw the game. But, and, and he had a personality as well that he wouldn't take any nonsense from anybody. Yeah. Like if anybody said to him, Jack, I think this is what we said. Look, that's enough. You do what I tell you to do. Yeah. And he had no respect, and I mean this in a certain way, to the players. No. Do you know what I mean? Like Liam Brady, for example, we know yeah. he didn't treat Liam very well. Yeah. Uh, and Liam was a terrific player. But Liam, he, Liam would scare the life out of him. Yes. Because Liam could, would get the ball on the edge of the box. Yeah. And all Jack could see is him losing the ball. Yeah. Because that right. was Jack. Now, yeah. you mentioned Bobby there. Um and uh, Bobby was, of course, one of the greatest players. And I knew Bobby at Manchester United. You knew Bobby, um, of course, because you played with him for so long in the Manchester United team. Uh, they were very different types of players, but also very different types of people. Oh, totally different. I mean, Bobby was a, was a gentleman, mm-hmm. quiet, um, uh, and very uh, pleasant. Were you... Were you Tell me, but they for, first of all were different types of people, but they really didn't get on either. Well, it, it, in a later on, way. And later on in their life, they didn't. They got on okay. Actually, when when I was at Manchester United with Bobby, Jack used to come over sometimes. Yes, and they were okay. They were quite friendly. I think it became a family thing later on in their life. That now they were totally different characters. I mean, like if 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 for example you if you went into to, to a pub, say with Jack, or Jack yeah. would be up at the bar and he'd be talking to. Everybody. Yes. And he'd be catching a pint <laughs> off everybody. Bobby would sit over in the corner. You wouldn't yeah. even hear him. You wouldn't see him. He'd be totally, totally on his own. Yeah. We're totally two different characters. Jack took after the mother. Sissy was the mother. Yes. And she was ja- related to Jackie Milburn, a great Newcastle player. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there was a great history in their family. Mm. came from Ashington in Northumberland, mm. which was a mining village. Yeah. And uh, Jackie Milburn was regarded a great centre forward for yeah. the old Newcastle team. Yeah. She was related to him. And she was the, the, the person who um, was very uh, often in the press <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Sissy was a show off. Yeah. Sissy was a show off. Uh, actually, when Bobby got his first cap, the, there was a photograph in the paper of Sissy taking a penalty at Wembley. <laughs> Bobby would yeah. be mortified. Yes. Jack would think that would be the biggest joke. Yeah. Going. Yeah. Sissy and Jack got on really well. She was, she was a real show off. Yeah. And Bobby was anything but. Yes. He'd be totally embarrassed by all that all that uh, situation. Yeah. But I think Jack and Bobby got on okay. They didn't. They wouldn't have seen that much of, of it. But I think there was a family business later on in their life, which wasn't good. Yeah, I think Jack said. I think that he and, he, and Jack was very good to his parents. I mean, he went back, looked after them, <laughs> um, and I think he felt that Bobby didn't. Well, Bob didn't at the end yeah. because there was a there was a, a family row and yeah. about the kids. Or, when I, I, I was, um, but but Bobby was got on well with the mother early on. And funny enough, the father was. I remember going to the uh, actually the sixty three cup final when we won in sixty three. They had the, the do afterwards, hmm. uh, and I remember I was there. Well, at you got that. Yeah. Well, you, you, it's a wonder you don't remember, do you remember Sissy. Sissy was all over the place, you know. and the father came in. The fa- was, father was an ex miner and thing came in, and he had his cap on. Yeah, he took his cap on and put it in his pocket. This is in the Savoy. Quiet as could be, and Sissy would be all over the place. They were totally chalk and yes. cheese. So Bobby definitely took after the father in that in the in the family way, and uh, Jack was was uh, more like definitely more like the more like the mother. Jack could Jack could go into any pub. 
Yeah, and he'd be, I mean, quite apart from his football activity, he was very successful for a long time, became a great English character, had a Channel 4 program on fishing. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah, and He's fishing like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, so he, he became a, a sort of an English character, mm. as it were. And I remember I rang when I was writing the biography of Matt Busby, and at the same time I was uh, leading the fight against Jack's <laughs> tactics. And I rang Bobby's house because I wanted to talk to Bobby, who was notoriously... Uh, shy with the mm. press. I want to talk to Bobby about Munich and all of that. Mm. And Norma answered the phone, his Bobby's wife. Mm. And, uh, she, I said, Simon Dunphy here. And I was wincing. I said, I just wonder if, is Bobby there? I said, Eamon Dunphy, she said, are you the one who's fighting with Jack? <laughs> I said, yeah. She said, well, I'm very, very pleased to talk to you. <laughs> because I don't think she got on with Jack at all. No, but, no, no. Was it, uh, it was but, it. I, but Bobby, I went to, Bobby, to meet Bobby in Manchester. And I mean, he talked about Munich and the air crash and the, the, and the camaraderie between those young players, mm. and it was very, very moving, and mm. he actually, oh, Bobby he got very emotional. Bobby's, Bobby's, and he, because yeah. he hardly, he never talked about it, but he knew me from when I was, yeah, I was yeah, there for five yeah. years, and I always found him to be a, a real, uh, such a great player, but such a gentleman, uh, a really, really decent, nice human being. Yeah, yeah. Bobby. He, he, he was, he was very moody, Eamon. Yeah. You know, if you got him in the right moods, Bobby was into the, the Busby Babes in a big way. He was, yeah. And Bobby didn't like the pr uh, post Munich, I mean, where they were buying players in. Yes. Uh, uh, which were regarded as strange players, new players. Because uh, I remember I was in the time. Paddy Brown and Morris Setters, yeah, yeah. David Heard. David Heard. Yeah. Now, Even quite Dennis, a Dennis Law. Dennis Law. There was yeah. quite a few. Mm -hmm who weren't the Busby Babes, because the Busby Babes did yes. have a special thing about them yes. pr pr before the Munich Air Disaster, because they were nearly, like, nearly all young fellas that yeah. came up together, and Bobby was very, very much into the into the Busby Babes. Uh, and I remember even going down when I got in the team, and then Nobby got in the team, Shay Brennan got in the team, who were all Nobby original Stiles, yeah. Busby Babes. And uh, we were going to London, the four of us would be sitting together. Yes. That'd be mostly Bobby's yes. idea. Now it wasn't unpleasant to to the no. lads, but he, but Bobby was was a very very private, very yes. very private individual. Yes, I mean, yeah. And if he was in any company that wasn't he wasn't comfortable with, he would be very very quiet. Yes. Now I was in his company a few times where he'd be in the right company, and actually he'd sing a few songs. He was a big Sinatra man. Yes. And could do it. Yes. But you, 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 it, that was few and far between. Yeah. He was he was really very very. Yeah. Uh, could be very quiet and very reserved, I mean, very reserved. Yes. Uh, but I like Bobby. He was, he was, he was a really, I think, a really good character. Yeah. And I think you think he's the greatest player or one of the... Well, he's the best player I ever played with or against. Right. Well, that's pretty you good. Know, so that's, uh, you know, there was, yeah. I, I was very lucky I played with some good... Bobby was uh, uh, an amazing player, I mean, in, 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 uh, in that, like I played inside right to Bobby inside left. And uh, he, he, he wasn't an easy player to play with. Yeah, funny enough, you know, no, because he wasn't he, easy to predict. He just do what he wanted to do. Yeah. Bobby, Bobby, uh, and this sounds strange. I didn't think have, had a great knowledge of the game, mm. and he was purely instinctive in the way he played. Yeah. But what he had, I mean, he was he was quick. Yeah, he was two footed. He was a great dribbler. He didn't need anybody Pace. else. Pace right. as well, didn't he? Oh, quick, quick, quick as lightning. Yeah. He'd yeah. go past people, he'd be scored. Bobby scored 270 goals for Manchester United. Yeah. Left foot, right foot from 40 yards. Yeah. Like when I played with him, I was told at Manchester United, when you're in a good position or something, let it go simple and let it go quick. I played with Bobby and Bobby, I'd be in a good position. Didn't get it. Yeah. Right? A lot of times, didn't, most times didn't get it. And just when I'm going to say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Bobby, yeah. he's having a shot. Scored and having a shot either <laughs> for, from yeah. 40 yards. So he didn't need anybody. No. Like when I played with Bremner, for example, in Leeds, yeah. we needed each other to pass the ball to get up to the edge of the box. Yeah. Bobby didn't need anybody. No. I mean, he was, I mean, in today's terms, he was as good as anything that's out there now. Bobby? Yeah. Better. Yeah. Better. Yeah. As a midfield player, I mean, yeah. that to do what he did yeah. and score the goals that he did, 270 yeah. goals yes. from midfield. Yeah. Right, yeah. and he wasn't yeah. taking penalties. No, <laughs> he could do it. He could pick the like ball Paul up on the Paul edge Paul. of the box, yeah. and like, uh, like he played with Paddy Crown later on when they won the yes. Champions League and that. But you, I don't remember Bobby and, and Paddy co combining together to do it. No, just no, Bobby no. would do it. Yeah, he scored a great goal in Champions League. He curled it 
in the final against Benfica. He curled it over the keeper into the corner, the far corner of the net with the inside of his right foot. Yeah. It was an amazing goal. But anyway, to go he back. Did, but he even go back to England in 66. Eh? Oh, yeah. You know, he turned, he turned in front of me, scored a cracker against yeah. him. I forget which team it was, yeah. but his right foot from about 40 yards out. Yeah. But Bobby could do that on a regular basis. Yeah. But but don't don't talk to him on the pitch. Like again on the pitch, yeah. like when I was now I was three years younger than Bobby. You have a goal kick against you, and you 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 you, you, you balance up. I was in those days. It was yeah. inside right, inside left, right? And Bobby would wander over towards you. Yeah. You know, now I was three years younger. Bobby push over, but after four or five times of that, Bobby went, he's like, f off. Yeah, leave me alone. Yeah, like yeah. he didn't. No, that's what Bobby did it. Yeah. On his own. But the point is, he could do it on his own. He didn't yeah. need anybody else. He was unbelievable, Eamon. Now, Jack, um, as a person, I mean, again, we know he was very money conscious. Um, and uh, he had a testimonial year. Uh, <laughs> when Leeds were at their peak, you were winning, you know, championships yeah. and cups. And uh, you were uh, once again in the cup final. And I think it was Jack's uh, testimonial year. Yeah, yeah. And um, when you get to the cup final, uh, you have a kind of, in those days, I mean, it's probably yeah. irrelevant <laughs> today, but you had, this was the time when you could make a few quid yeah. uh, and you all banded together. Yeah, you had a pool. You had a pool, pool. Yeah, that yeah. everyone, all yeah. the money would go into the pool. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. If you did an article, yes. that would go into the pool. If yeah. you did an appearance, it went into the pool. Yeah. So there was nobody getting more than anybody else no. and it was, in it. Right. And right. you guys had been together for a long time. Now you get to the cup final and there's a pool, yeah. but it's Jack's testimonial year <laughs> tell me about that. well it got to a stage where it was uh i think we we we'd won the semi there was in those days there used to be a six week gap between the semi final about six weeks and yeah. the final and that's the time you'd be doing the articles because you'd yeah. already qualified for the final Raking it in <laughs> yeah but a lot, we noticed that jack was doing a, an article in the sunday mail a big article for at least 3 weeks yeah. but there was no sign <laughs> of anything coming into the yeah, pool. And now forget, we played at West Brom actually, and we had a meeting the night before to discuss this. This was the 16 players, right? We had yeah. a six, pool of 16 players at that time. And it was quite an awkward situation, but I think it was Billy brought it up as captain and said, Jack, look, we know you're doing the article, but there's no sign of you putting the money into the pool. He said, I'm not putting money into the pool. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was sort of chipped in. I said, well, Jack, well, like that's, that was the agreement. If any of us did a Billy's done article, yeah. I've done a few hours, it goes into the pool. Yeah. She said, no, I'm not putting the money into the pool. In those days, you were paid for doing an article. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it went into the pool. Because there was last 16 lads in the yeah, pool. Yeah. And some of them, obviously. Anyway, and he said, no, I'm not putting it in the pool. And we said, why Why not? It's, just cover. it's, it's you know. Yeah. He said, no, he said, I had an agreement to start the season with the mail for my testimonial year right. to do some articles for them. Yeah. So it's nothing to do with the cup final. <laughs> <laughs> we said, but Jack, the three hours you've done is all about the cup final. <laughs> he says, well, it doesn't matter. He says, what I'll do, he says, you lads keep, do the pool and I'll stay out of the pool. Yeah. Which was totally in his favour because he's getting well, very yeah, big money for, for on his own. And he's a World Cup winner and he's, he's a big name <laughs> and he's a marquee. Yeah. 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 So, so it didn't happen. No, but, but I mean, that was a, just a, a part of his But that was Jack. That Jack would, Jack would, Jack would do that. And I said like, now when I'm talking about Jack, you think it wasn't a very, I, I got on well with Jack. Yeah. And I like Jack. He, he was straight with that. Yeah. Even though it wasn't, it wasn't yeah. right. But he wasn't trying to, he wasn't trying to hide it. He said, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. And that was, and that was it. it. Would it be fair to say he was a bit eccentric? Yeah, he was Jack. Yeah. Jack didn't care about anybody, yeah. Damon. I, I always tell a tell us well, a made up story. Jack was the type of fella. If you were in, in Leeds at that time, or if you were in Dublin at, at any stage, and Jack was getting the six o'clock flight in the morning. Yeah. And you said to Jack, I'll give you a lift out. I'll pick you up and give you a lift out. Right? Yeah. But the night before, your mother dies and you ring him. Yeah. And you say to Jack, Jack, I can't pick you up in the morning. My mother's just died. Oh, for goodness sake. How am I supposed to get to the airport then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, that's an exaggeration. Would know, yeah. But that, that would be Jack. Yeah. And we all knew what he was like. We used to say there was Jack and the rest of us. Yes. Now, he was older than 
bus. Yes. Jack was older. Now, as someone who was a World Cup winner mm. uh, and went on to be um, a, a, a manager, uh, was he a commanding figure in the dressing room training ground or not? Because there were strong characters in the team, yourself and Billy Bremner mm. notably, but others to Peter Lorimer, uh, Eddie Gray. Was he a commanding figure or was he uh, a man apart? Um, well, he would have more than he say. Right. But it wouldn't be as influential as he would think he was. Was he a leader in that dressing uh, room? He was a leader when it came to doing his job. Yes. If you know what I mean, Eamon. It was all about, like, Jack. Uh, in, and he, he was good at what he, di he, he did. And, and he was a good defender. So he would, he would mm. contribute. Yes. In, but only, mostly where, where it affected him. How did it go on with Revy? Well, he had his rows. He had his rows with everybody, you know, yeah. Jack, because he was he was adamant of what he did. Yes. And obviously he had leadership qualities in his own way Yeah, because that's when he became manager. Jack had firm ideas of what he was going to do and nobody was going to ever change his mind. Now, that is leadership. Yes. You and I didn't agree with what he was doing, That was, but that's beside the point. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Players but, knew. But the players knew. I'm yeah. Not, this is what you – I don't care whether you agree with me or not. Mm. He was very – you know, he was – Jack was – he. he I'm not painting him in a very good light, man, but he had a great sense of humour as well, Eamon. It was funny because after the 66 World Cup, the following season, a lot of 66 lads had the worst seasons he ever had. But Jack was quite quite a clever lad as well. He was very, very well in with the press lads. Yes. He'd always have a drink with the press lads and he'd go out with them and he was very, very close to them. So the following year, right, he had like a lot of seasons with Leeds. He had the worst season he ever had in 66, 67. Right. And he was football of the year. Right. He was voted football of the year. Yeah. Which yeah. became a joke with the lads and Jack himself. Because what was happening sometimes, say we were playing the five aside and that. Yeah. Right. And somebody was having a nightmare. Yeah. Even Jack would say, if you keep playing like that, you get football of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he had to say, I knew. Yeah. You know, he'd, have, he'd, have, he'd have a good laugh about it, you know. Yeah. And, 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 he, and he could be very, very good company. So I'm not, I don't pick paint about people I'm not talking about in football sense yeah. generally he went his own way on the football pitch was a very very good player so when he went into management like which one of the things you have to do in management is go your own way yeah. Eamon. he wouldn't stand any nonsense from anybody even with Liam Brady Okay. no Liam I mean the first job he took actually I know something about this he went to Middlesbrough Middlesbrough yeah yeah and I was playing for Millwall at the time and um, they won uh, promotion. Mm. They won the league, actually. What's now the championship mm. was now the first, uh, second division. Uh, they won it with eight matches to spare. Mm. It had an absolutely outstanding team. Mm. Graham Sinness played for him. Mm. He took Graham Sinness from Spurs. Uh, Graham played, and Bobby Murdoch played in yeah. that team, who was one of the Lisbon Lions. Yeah. Uh, Terrific player, Bobby. Oh, yeah. yeah. He yeah. was a veteran at that stage, mm. but they came to play us at the end. They beat us 4 1, not, mm. which not many teams did, but they were brilliant. And it was sort of structured um, football mm. in that, you know, uh, they got it up quick, yeah. got it up front quick, oh, yeah. supported the front man, mm. uh, and um, yeah. they were yeah. a very, See, very think, good. I think team. what he believed in, Eamon, uh, th there was no mistakes. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, absolutely. That, you know, like in other words, no, no messing. What he was call it, no messing around at the back. Yeah, right. Get it up there, and then what he did have after that was an honesty in the team to get after the ball yeah. as he came on with the ice and put them under pressure. Yes, he did that. Now, if you do that with any with reasonably good players, yeah, right, you're not going to give much away. Yeah, that's for sure. You're not going to be exciting either, and, and maybe you, you won't win matches as many, uh, but that's another day. But that's what he believed in, yeah. and he wouldn't have anything else. Yeah. So there was no good of the player saying to Jack, Jack, I don't, he'd say, what? Yeah. You don't agree? What? I don't care whether you agree or not. Yeah. You don't agree, get out. Yeah. This is what you do. Yeah. And that's leadership, of course, because like, I, didn't, I never believed in his philosophy, but that's, that was only my opinion on it. I, I understood what he what he was doing, but when when you had players like if you had Bobby Charlton in the team, which he wouldn't have in the teams, this is the, this is the criticism I would have had of Jack. I, I said to him, Bremner and myself, I said, wouldn't get in your team. He said, no, yeah. you wouldn't, unless you do what I you want me. To, I want want, and he said, well, we're not going to do that. Yes. Tough. Yeah. That's and that was it. That was that was my disagreement with the philosophy on it. And my, that was my philosophy on criticism in the Irish team because we had Brady, we had Whelan. We had great players, in my opinion. I did. That we, sure. we, 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 we 
didn't make the most of them. No, but, and that's, uh, but that's only an opinion. But in Jack's case, he was the first one to take us to a World Cup, to a European Championship. And of course, it, 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 that's, it's an emotional time, yes. obviously, because the fans who didn't really follow football before were on the world stage, which was great. Yeah, 88 was his, you know, he, yeah. he came in 86 mm. and um, he got the job actually uh, because the FAI screwed up. Uh, they had a plot to get Bob Paisley <laughs> yeah. and um, they ended up with Jack. Mm. Um, and it was a mistake, uh, really. And they couldn't find Jack. Um, Jack to, didn't care about the job. No. <laughs> Jack was off fishing somewhere. He didn't yeah, expect but they, to get They couldn't it. find him <laughs> for 24 fishing. hours. <laughs> and every, <laughs> it was announced that he'd got the yeah. job. But they had a problem. And I was working as a journalist on the ground at, at, at that. So I was in Marion Square the night it happened. And I know you were around town because you were also in that mix. Um, but Des Casey, who was, I think, the president of the FAI at the time, had told Bob Paisley, he, he'd fixed it, mm. so that Bob Paisley would get the job. Mm. And, of course, Bob Paisley was a legend for what he'd done at Liverpool, and he told Bob Paisley he was getting the job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, it all went badly wrong. Yeah. But Jack eventually arrived in Dublin on Monday, this all went wrong on the Friday. They found him somewhere on the Saturday and, told, and said he had the job. But he, he had a press conference and I went to it. It was, uh, it was in the Westbury. It was hilarious. But Peter Byrne, who was the Irish Times football correspondent, um, who subsequently became very close to Jack and wrote, I think, a ghosted book with yeah, Jack. It could be, yeah. yeah. Uh, he said to Jack, do you know, he said, Mr. Charlton, that you are very lucky uh, to get the job and uh, he said it was really supposed to be Bob Paisley and it was mm -hmm. that, that. and Jack absolutely erupted mm -hmm. and he lifted your man out of it Peter Byrne yeah. and I was standing there and I, Peter Byrne and I weren't friends at, this, <laughs> at all but I thought Jack was you know I said hold on Jack he's entitled to ask a question mm -hmm. and he turned to me he <laughs> said don't you fucking start. <laughs> he said, do you want to come outside? And there was a whole, oh, like, yeah, crest yeah, pack yeah. there. It was like mad stuff yeah. in the Westbury. I said, no, thanks. I'm going home. <laughs> no, thanks. But that was, got us off to a bad start. But he was, uh, even in that press conference, it was, it was amusing. But, um, he kind of set the team up. And as you say, we had great yeah. players. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. mean, he, we had David Leary. Uh, Ronnie Whelan. We had five centre halves. Paul McGrath, Mark Lawrenson. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Moran. Kevin Moran. Mick, Mick, Mick McCarthy. Yeah, Mick, uh, I think he brought Mick in, maybe. Or, oh, well, Mick no, was Mick playing, was in, yeah. yeah. Mick was playing, he, yeah, yeah. 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 And he had very, very Stapleton. Yeah. Liam Brady. Yeah. It was a really Ronnie outstanding Whelan. team. Ronnie Whelan. Ronnie Whelan, yeah. Ray Houghton came into the team. Ray, yeah. And John Aldridge. John Aldridge. He got Ray uh, Houghton. Andy, now, Andy one John, of the Andy things Jones, he did yeah. well, yeah, he recruited those guys. He went. Yeah. I think Aldridge Oxford. and Houghton were playing for Oxford mm. and he went and persuaded them mm. uh, to to actually uh, sign up under yeah, the granny I rule. I don't think there was much persuasion in it. Right? Yeah. You know, the, the, the lads weren't, they weren't going to be picked by Scotland, they weren't going yeah. to be picked by... But anyway, that's that's what he did. And he, he did a big job with the Irish team, and there's no doubt about that. Yeah, I think his analysis of the, the European game particularly, because that's where we were, was that uh, they didn't like to be pressed. They like time on the ball, they like to play it out from the back, the things that he didn't want you to do at Leeds. So we're going to put them under pressure, get high up the pitch, put them under pressure, uh, and mm. they won't like it, and they mm. didn't like it. Mm. But it did mean that also that to get the ball up the pitch, you had to knock it long, mm. get their defenders turned, facing the wrong goal, and then you're up behind them. Mm. And that was a game that was quite primitive given the quality of the players that well, we Well, exactly, had. because, you see, there's nothing stopping you doing that anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing stopping you putting the players under pressure. You mm. don't have to knock every ball up the pitch. Yeah. You know, there's a way. I mean, there's sometimes in the Irish, some of the other matches we played, we played terrible. We played terrible. We didn't lose them. Or we didn't play well at all with the players that we had. And, of course, if you, you're not going to lose many goals because if you keep doing that, but you're not yeah. going to play as well as you can play with the players that you yeah. have. I mean, it's, it's neither one way or the other because what mm. a lot of people say, well, you knock them up and you put them under pressure. But you, like Jack playing the Leeds team we played with, and we put teams under pressure sure. all the time. It's not one or the other. You can no. do, you can do both. That would have been my criticism of Jack. Yeah. But there's a combination or there's, there's a, a balance to playing it 
playing yeah. it out from the back and putting the teams under pressure. That's the balance in it. But that, but that, but there again, we had different philosophies on the game. We fell out with it a lot of times when we played together. But as I said with Jack, Jack, I I admired Jack because that's what he believed in. Yeah. I had no problem with that when he was doing it. And there's lots of things that I would say now about Jack and football. But I would regard Jack as a friend. When I yes. see Jack now, he's a friend, and he regards me as a friend. And uh, when, he, when he was managing the Irish team, I had no contact with Jack at all. No. I, actually, I kept away from him yeah. totally because we I did didn't for a while. Uh, we went out to the airport hotel well, a couple one, of times. Once, 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 I think. You took me out to yeah. make up yeah. over after the press conference yeah. thing, but it didn't yeah. last long. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, but I, I, I didn't mix with Jack at all. While he was that. doing? No. And no, when no. you met him, I mean, I was crit critical of him. We, well, I was very critical of him t to the point that it became a, a big, you know, mm. uh, fuss uh, with newspapers and mm. people actually. And it was quite dangerous for a while to be uh, criti critical of Jack when, you know, when the wave was on mm. the World Cup, Italian 90 in particular. But um, during that period, you'd still get to meet at Leeds because you had old boys get together yeah. quite regularly. Not, funny enough, not at that time. No, I mean, like it was. The, I think he was too busy, and and then it was only later on that we started having to get together. Right. I never. I, I don't. I remember actually meeting Jack at any time during his apart from that the early the ten days years in, in, in yeah. his managerial uh, and it was situation. it was necessary, I suppose, to keep away from yeah because you, you you can't be objective. No. And you, I didn't want to talk no. to him. You know what I mean. Yeah. And, and I didn't. And I, I'm sure he wasn't bothered about talking to me. But when I when I did meet him afterwards and that, like even to this day, I was Jack at a do there last year, and I, I would regard Jack as a friend, yes. and he would regard me as a friend. Yeah. Uh, because we 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 had our differences in football, mm. but we both agreed on on yes. that. I, Jack wasn't going to convince me, mm. and I wasn't going to convince him. No. But we played together for ten years. Yeah. Jack and, and, and he we had, had our hours and we yes. had our, we had our, 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 our good days we had our bad days but we, we but Jack, I'll tell you one thing about Jack I mean you could have the biggest row immediately after a match yeah the biggest row and over the weekend you think about it and say well, I was wrong there I shouldn't have said that and you, I used to strip next to him and then the morning Jack sorry about that I said what what yeah. are you talking about didn't bear grudges no no it, it generally would forget say oh, like fuck off like, yeah you know, I don't, what? What are you talking about? The one con consistent thing is, and it was funny, he had the press wrapped around his oh, little finger. Uh, yeah. And the Irish guys uh, yeah. as well. Um, and when I went to it Italy uh, for the later games after the pen throwing incident at <laughs> RTE, but the English journalists, like the late Hugh Michael mm -hmm. Vanny, uh, Jim Lawton, the late mm -hmm. Jim Lawton mm -hmm. now, uh, all those guys. I mean, they thought he was a god. They loved and him. I, I, and they, they, this god, this is the English guys, had taken a, a country, yeah. Yeah. little old Ireland, with no players, mm -hmm. he, with no good players, and he'd, mm -hmm. he'd done this miracle to get us to Jack major Jack believed that himself. Yeah, yeah, I know. And that was part yeah. of the, yeah. the, the, the Really, a real irony here. Mm -hmm. They were very, very, very good players. Terrific players. Well, that was. But Jack like, believed that himself, didn't he? I mean, Ronnie that, never. He, he left Ronnie out uh, in yeah. Italy. Ronnie played left back. Mm. Mark Lawrence and, and Paul McGrath, two of the best central mm. defenders ever, mm. never played in the centre of the Irish defence mm. at all. Mm. Mark played in midfield. Mm. Paul played left back. back yeah. He played. He played. In the giant stadium, Paul set and a half, but he rarely played set and a half for Ireland. Mm. Mark never, mm. Ronnie never played in his right position. Uh, no, he, he didn't believe in players like that, Eamon. You know, and these were terrific players who could do what he needed needed mm. to be done. But Jack was he, he was Jack was very clever in many ways, in, in, for, for for his own for his own sake. I mean, he had the press last. That's how he got Football of the Year. Yeah. Eamon. He used to mix with them. Yeah. Now, after Mando, when we were away with Leeds abroad, we were away a lot in... in yes, in, in Europe. None yeah. of us used to drink with the press lads. No. None of us. Because we didn't like them. Didn't like them. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> Jack would be have, out with six of them. Yeah. You know, that's how we could, he did get football of the year. And I'm yeah. telling you, in 19, uh, after 66, 67 season, I mean, he had a terrible season. But he was, he was like that with the press guys. He was, he was brilliant with them. For, you know, he was brilliant at handling. There's the press, another he irony. Have a drink with them, another you know? irony about Jack, and 
uh, this is to do with the ITV panel. They were the first British mm. station to have a panel mm. uh, of experts or an a mm. and to do analysis. He was on Paddy Graham, Brian Clough, mm. uh, Jack Charlton became a huge name yeah. as a soccer pundit mm. um, or analyst. Uh, and it was brutal. Like he'd, he'd have a right oh, yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Have no, no message. There'd be no holding back with Jack on, on, no. on anything like that. He wouldn't. Jack, Jack didn't have, have an ounce of diplomacy in him. Now, whether he, he wanted to or not on the panel, yeah, he would just say it. Yeah, and they were good. Yeah, yeah. same in a team talker. And, 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 and Jack, Jack, what, what, what? Yeah, Jack, Jack would say, "You two, yes. little bastard. Yeah, coming back too far." Yeah. Right. No, again, no, no sort of respect. No. <laughs> if I left the middle as a goal scored, yeah. Jack thought he was Leeds United. Yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that was the way he was. Mm. But lucky enough, with the lads, you see, what we found with the lads at Leeds, there was the lads and there was Jack. Yes. Because right. Jack was older than us. Yes. And he, he didn't mix with us in the But we knew what he was yeah. and what he could do and what he, you know, all that. And, and gener generally speaking, Jack was liked. One other aspect of him that's fascinating, he had a hugely successful after-dinner speaking career. Yeah. Mm. Now, I saw him mm. give an after-dinner yeah. speech. It was brilliant. Yeah. It was 45 minutes. Yeah. He told jokes. Yeah. He was, mm. his timing was perfect. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. And I saw him do it. Actually. Yeah. I saw him loads of times doing it. He was brilliant at it. Yeah. He was brilliant at it. And he could he could tell a story in a natural, yeah, in a very natural way. That's because he see. I think with Jack doing even the after dinner, I mean, like I did, I did a bit of you did a bit of after dinner speaking. I'd I never, a, I'm hopeless. Did, well, I, I did, I did a bit, but I'd be as nervous as a kitten. Yeah, Jack wouldn't wouldn't have a nerve in his body doing it. That's why he was so good. Yeah, he just could up and do it. In other words, I'm be, he wouldn't have any nerves about anything. No, but it, it takes, would be sensitive. I tell yeah. jokes and do that stuff. Mm. It, you have to have timing and you have to have well, a certain had that. But stuff. The, the one that, that, the thing that does you, I mean, is the nerves. Yeah. Not being able to do it. And Jack wouldn't be bothered. Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. He wouldn't. He'd just do it. <laughs> and just to, to finally wrap up, I mean, quite apart from his soccer activities here mm. and in, in England, I mean, he had that fishing program on uh, Channel 4. Mm -hmm. uh, he did the punditry or uh, analysis on ITV. He had a, a kind of career outside of football, as mm -hmm. it were, as someone, you know, who uh, he was kind of grumpy, uh, contrary, but loved as well by mm -hmm. English people. And you have to say, um, I think Irish people had amazing affection for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, quite rightly too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what he did. I mean, he, 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 he we, we'd never qualified for a major competition before. Mm. He qualified for the major, and he called for the World Cup. And I mean, we know the, we, 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 we went through it, and yeah. we know the emotion that this yeah. uh, develops in as the World Cup goes on. Yeah. People who had no interest in football. Oh, generally, I mean, incredible. I think my yeah. saying at the time was, well, he, 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 he definitely created a new soccer following in yes, this country indeed, yeah. uh, at the same time antagonized yeah. in many ways yeah. the original football supporters yes. but he pop he popularized is that the right yeah, popular well, yeah. the game here I mean, in a way that had never been popularized before kevin doyle shane long the lads from counties uh, all, like all over from the place. yeah and kevin's from wexford yeah. and so all around the country and i know you've been around the country mm. with your foundation all around the country people are playing soccer yes. and uh, have a real interest yeah. and a, a, a growing passion right. for soccer because of what Jack did yeah. from 88 when we qualified for the European Euros. Championships and, uh, to 96 when we failed to qualify and he yeah. he finished. I mean, the the uh, the football side of, I mean, there were days like Italian 90 when we beat Italy, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 94 mm -hmm. in New York when we beat yeah. Italy in Giant Stadium. There were days, then we went to Florida mm -hmm. and, and Mexico and Holland yeah. absolutely slaughtered us. Yeah. We were trying to play his kind of football. I was down there yeah. in, the heat. you know, the yeah. humidity was mm -hmm. just impossible. Mm -hmm. But sort of yeah. when you when you wrap it all up, which is what mm -hmm. I want to do now, um, you'd have to say um, he gave 
an awful lot more yeah. than he took. Well, he definitely he popularised the game um, in a way that had never been popularised before. Yeah. Because once we qualified for the Euros, which was great, but once we got into Italian 90, yeah. right, there was people followed the, the country, yes, not just the soccer team, the country, in a way that had never been co covered before. Because yes. you came, I'm a little bit older than you, where it was yeah. Gaelic versus soccer when I was yes. a kid. Yes. Uh, and that that continued for a long, long, long time, yeah. as we know. But when it came to Italia 90, it didn't matter who it was, no. soccer, Gaelic, rugby, it followed the national team. Yeah. And that was a huge breakthrough for soccer, soccer in this country. In this country, absolutely. And of course, like yourself, he became a freeman of Dublin City. Just a final question about him. Uh, when you meet him now, does he talk about Ireland? Did he realise the impact he'd had here? Uh, does What's his feeling about his time as Irish Well, Jack manager? would say, I love Ireland. Yeah. I love Ireland. You see, Jack didn't know and still doesn't know anything about the history of soccer in this country. No. You see, when Jack took over, as you know, there'd been a lot of clearance. First of all, Jack could pick the team. There was no selection committee. Oh, yeah, yeah. All that was done. Jack didn't know about no. that. Yeah. And didn't care about it, yeah. In in the slightest, yeah. Right. That 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 would be be the thing. He 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 had no knowledge or of, curiosity of the revolution that had taken place before he came yeah. or the history of the of, game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He just did it. Yeah. Because it suited him. He did well from it. The team yeah. did well from it. So he was he was okay. But he'd have a great affection for this country when I see yes. him. Like I yeah. only see him now and again. But Jack Jack and I'd be big pals. In, in that way, it, very, very good friends. Yes, actually, despite our differences. But one thing I don't do ever is bring up football, <laughs> <laughs> ever. And we check, and he said, "How's the family?" Because we knew the family, you know. Yeah, I, see, I went to Leeds. I was just married when I went to yeah. Leeds. So my wife would be friendly with with Pat, yeah. his wife, and and we were a close knit group, group of people. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean. So we were, and we were together for ten or eleven years, Jack. So that that. You don't ever lose that, despite mm. what we would call our differences. Actually, over the, the Irish situation, me criticising Jack, we never fell out over no. that. Jack never fell out with me over that. Because no. Jack would be the first one to go on the telly and exactly. do the same thing himself. Yep. That's, what he, that's what he did with England. Yep. So he didn't say to me, oh, you, you little so-and-so, so -and -so. we're okay. That's the, that was the game. Great fans, but don't mention the soccer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, John Giles, uh, I'd like to thank you very, very much uh, for uh, that, those memories of Jack. Jack, of course, is still very much alive, thank God, uh, and with us. Um, 